I've been um, I've been working in this technology field since the mid '90s, which sounds like forever ago. I guess it kind of was, um, <clears throat> but um, I'm also a exercise and gadget enthusiast. So, oh, someone has the eight. That's cool. Um, so I'm going to be discussing today the various tools and the various uh, commonly used features on the device that are uh, probably classic for everybody or everyone. So what I did is I threw in the chat, and I'll do it again for those who just arrived, uh, a link to the, the old handout <clears throat> so you can play along or kind of follow along at home. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to jump on and start working off of that handout, I mean, right away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my most favorite function, and that's, um, oops, I put it, I didn't put it in the document. Uh, again, for those who are just joining, uh, this is a copy of the handout. Um, so you can uh, follow along. <clears throat> so the most thing that I use, because I, I here's here's my phone, and they are tied together. Um, but I lose this guy constantly around the house all the time. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to use my Apple Watch to find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick up from the bottom, and it brings me to... I'm going to do it on this screen here. So I flick up from the bottom. And as you can see in my little handout here, you have all of these commonly used functions. And the one that I want to focus on is the one, it's this guy right here. It looks like a phone that's vibrating. So if I flick up and I hit the little vibrator thing, it makes the sound that helps you find it. Now, I know that this functionality is also in iCloud. I could go to iCloud, log myself in, use the find my tool and make the phone make that sound. But frankly, doing it from the watch is far, far easier. So that's a feature that I use constantly. There are many other commonly used tools in that flick up from the bottom. So we're gonna go over a few more of those as well. <clears throat> so the other one that I like to use a lot is the flashlight. Now, again, you flick up from the bottom, you hit on that little light, now, you can hopefully, hopefully I'm not blinding you too bad with the flashlight. And no, it is not quite as bright as the flashlight on the phone. But the thing is, you're always, you have it with you. Oh, let me admit that person. So you always have it with you. So that's another feature that I find super useful. Other items that are in that space, again, I'm flicking up from the bottom, um, whoops, is, oops, let me do this, uh, clock. Um, there are a couple of more features in there that I like to use. So the, it looks like, um, like uh, the, um, gosh, the the music, the masks, the, uh, the, the tragedy and comedy masks in there. That is called theater mode. And what that does is it makes it silent and the screen stays dark. So if you get a text or if you get an alert or if you get an alarm, the light, uh, even if you have the watch silenced, it still will light up. But if you put it in theater mode, it actually stays completely dark. So you will not be disturbing those around you. So it's like super duper silence mode. 
So I use that a good deal. There's also the do not disturb, which is the crescent moon. Again, if you, I'm all, I'm just, all I'm doing is I'm flicking up from the bottom and I'm getting the, the basic features that are available there in the bottom when you flick up from there. <clears throat> some other features that are in there that I use with some frequency is um, the headphone volumes. There should be a picture of an ear. So if you're, um, let me just turn it on for you. So if you're, see the problem is when I use this, every time I bring it up to show it to the screen, it thinks I'm going into a different mode. So you can see that it's, no, it went to sleep again. Sorry about that. It keeps on going into silent mode, uh, sleep mode. So if the, there's a shape of an ear that allows you to increase or decrease the earbuds. This is particularly useful if you have the uh, air pods for your earbuds, uh, but that also does work if you have the hardwired um, items as well. So that will, in fact, be quite helpful uh, for you. So my point is that in the control screen, you can flick up from the bottom and get many of the functions that you will be using on the regular. And that's sort of the point, having them in such a way that they're easy to access. <clears throat> so that is the, does it work on non iBud? Yes, if they're physically plugged in to your phone, uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> the question is, does it work with, um, can they be moved around? Bluetooth. Yes. As long as they're connected in some capacity, you can increase or decrease the volume using that item on the, um, on the screen. You can also turn the crown and that will, sure. And that will also increase the volume if the only thing you're doing is playing music. So you have the side button and you have the crown. If you're just playing music and music is the one, is the app that's currently running, you can also increase and decrease the volume with the crown, which is super helpful. <clears throat> now, the biggie is the reason why most people get themselves an Apple Watch is the tracking of the workouts. <clears throat> so... Um, question I just got was, um, she can't flick up from the bottom today. What you need to do is you need to be in an app. So I generally, I'm in like the watch face. So I'm going to hit the little button here. Like I'm in the watch face and I, then I can flick up from the bottom. If I'm in the list of apps, you can't. So if I'm in the list of apps, See, keep on going. I'm sorry, keep on going to sleep when I try to bring it up to the, the screen. So if you're in the list of apps, you can't flick up from the bottom. But if you're on an app already, say for example, the clock, like I'm in, see, it keeps going to sleep. When I go, when I go to the clock like that, then you can flick up from the bottom. <clears throat> okay, so the most commonly used feature on one of these fitness watches is in fact track your workouts. So uh, under all apps, it looks like uh, a person on a green background, uh, a black outline in a green background, and that brings you to the workout feature. Now I have several workouts already set up. So I have outdoor walk, I have indoor cycle. I have the ones that I use most regularly. So if you use the crown from the side, you have the ability to scroll through the most commonly used 
features, the most commonly used workouts, I should say, that you regularly use. So once you're in one, <clears throat> uh, in the upper right-hand corner, there should be a circle with three little dots in it. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to pick how it is you want your workout to be tracked. Uh, if you can see in my third screen where it says track your workouts, there's a third screen over. It says uh, outdoor, and then there are four items, open, calories, time, and distance. It's, uh, it's this guy right here. It's the third one. It says outdoor. That feature is the way in which you can determine how you want the watch to track what you're doing. So open simply means it's just going to record everything. With calories, you can say, okay, I want to burn 200 calories, and it will count up for you to 200 calories. Or I want to walk five miles today. That would be distance. Or if you want to go for a particular amount of time, it will do the timing for you. So open is the one that tracks all of them. Well, they all track all of them, but the other three, calories, distance, and time, will alert you when you've reached that particular goal, whereas open just records everything. So it's uh, it's this guy here. It says uh, outdoor and then 1137. Once you are ready to roll, it will give you a, a countdown. and then it'll start tracking your items. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to swipe to the right and I'm gonna hit pause. Okay, so to, to stop the workout, what you do, and we, the question is how do I reset? You slide, you swipe from the right excuse me, from the left to the right, and that will get you the, see, it keeps turning itself off when I do that. It goes to the, gosh, it keeps turning itself off when I, lift, when I lift my wrist, it does that. Sorry about that. That allows you to pause it or to stop it. The red X is the end button. And what it will do is it'll then track how far or how long you have gone. As you can see in my picture all the way to the right, um, it'll show me that particular one. I, I walked for 51 seconds. I burned one calorie and uh, I walked 128 feet. So obviously that particular workout was not particularly far. However, and that's a picture of my little wrist down there, the other thing that I really find useful is in the middle of your workout, you can swipe up. And what it will do is it will also give you your current heart rate. That's a particularly useful feature, particularly for people who have just started their athletic journey. Because beginning athletes are not always aware of how hard they are working. So it's important for you to not overtax yourself. As you can see in my particular picture of my watch right there, you can see I'm in the red zone. Meaning my watch believes I am working too hard to be healthy. So please, when you're using this resource, it's a super powerful watch that's sitting on your wrist. It's a super powerful computer that's sitting on your wrist. I highly recommend that you use all of the features, including the active heart rate monitor. I'm going to go off on a tiny tangent just for a second. And I'm going to tell you that it's vitally important that you're aware of this number. <clears throat> 
What you want to do is you want to take the number 220 and subtract your age and then multiply that number by 0.75. That is your goal number, your heart rate number for best aerobic activity. Higher than that, you're going anaerobic and much higher than that, you're potentially asking for the inability to go very long. If your heart rate's super high for too long, your body's not going to take it. And therefore, you're gonna, your body's going to force you to stop. You may have heard of the workout space called Orange Theory. I don't go there, but the point is that they're recommending that you be in the orange, which is the segment below the red on your Apple Watch also. So you get optimal workout without putting yourself in danger. So what I'm saying is whether it's a walk or a bike or a run or a yoga or whatever it is, while you're working out every once in a while, swipe up and you will get the heart rate monitor, the current reading. And that way you know how it is you're doing. I bring all that up you know, in part for safety. But the other thing that the watch does is it will track today's fitness, however many bits you ran. So what it will do is it'll also keep track of all of your workouts for the day. So in this way, you can be aware of how you did. Is anybody out there using the friends feature you can compete with your apple watch friends using this tool anybody i like that's one of the reasons i have this apple watch i have a bunch of buddies that i we all have apple watches and we all sort of compete with each other each day to ensure that we're keeping healthy so to add someone, cool, I'm glad. Thank you for letting me know that you use this feature. In the upper right-hand corner, there is a, on your, this is on your phone. You can't really do it on the watch. So if you, if you, you, if you have your phone with you in the up, and you're in your fitness app, it's the, it's the circles. You go into the fitness app and in the upper right-hand corner, there is um, like a person's head with a little green plus sign. And if you tap on that, it will show you all of the people with whom you're currently competing. But then in the upper right hand corner of that, there's a green plus sign and that allows you to send an invitation to someone. So in this way, you can add them as a friend, as a computer, as a person with whom you might consider being an, an exercise buddy, even if you're not physically together. So I find that a fun way to keep track of what my friends are doing and encourage each other. Every time that these people do a workout, I get notified. Now I'll admit, I happen to be a particularly uh, competitive person with some of these friends. Um, I'll, I'll answer that in a, question, in a second. And in this way, I can know how they're, um, how they're doing. So again, to add a person, um, what I, to look, okay, let me go sort of, so, to, so I'm in, my, I'm in my, my phone app, right? I'm in the phone app. And what I do is in the bottom right-hand corner, it should have a little like letter S in the corner. And I tap on that, it'll show me the list of names of all the people with whom I am competing. Those are the people with whom it's called, it's called sharing. I'm sharing it with each other. But if I hit on the 
circle with the head in the upper right hand corner, that allows me to add people. So I hit on the plus and then I can add So I just added my wife and she'll get a notification saying that I want to share workouts with her. And then she has the ability to share workouts with me. So it's the sharing in the bottom right hand corner, then it's the head and then it's the plus. So I find that's a fun way to keep track of people as well as encourage one another so it sort of helps you keep track of your fitness goals now i will tell you that this apple watch tool is only for other apple watch users you can't use this with other fitness trackers so if you're using a fitbit or if you're using a Garmin, or you're using some other smartwatch, or your, your friend is, or your relative is, this tool will only work with other Apple Watches. If you have a person who doesn't have an Apple Watch, and you still want to compete with them and work with them, what you're going to need to do is you're going to put, you're going to have to find the app called Strava, which I've just put the name in the chat for you. So if you're looking to compete with someone who doesn't have an Apple Watch, you need to install Strava on your Apple Watch, and the other person has to install Strava on their fitness tracker, and in that way, you can see each other's fitness. But if you're going to use the Apple Watch, you have to use, the other person has to have an Apple Watch as well. So I explain all that on the top of page two of your handout. You can do it on the, uh, on the uh, device itself, but it's a heck of a lot easier to do it on the phone. But this gives you um, the ability to see it as you swipe, and then it says invite a friend, and then it's going to ask you, who do you want? Oh, see, in the, in the picture right there, you can see that my friend Tom finished a, a cycling workout. So in this way, um, you can see that I always send an email back, hey, great job, keep doing it, whatever, try to be encouraging. And, you know, we all try to encourage each other to, uh, to be better. So that is the aspect of the fitness tracker. Now, the other thing, another thing that I like to do is I like to monitor my heart rate. So what you're going to do is you're going to fire up your handy dandy watch and you're going to uh, hit once on the side, on not on the crown, but on the side. And that should bring up a little thing that says all apps. And you're looking for the one that looks like a red, you can see it on my, in my hand out there, a red circle with a white, well, heart. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it on my little handout here. It's on the top of page three. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to find the red circle with the white line that represents a heart. And what you're going to do is you are going to tap on that little button and it's going to start to try to measure your heart rate. Just stay there a minute and it should eventually tell you what your current heart rate is. Now, I want to be clear here. The device will not determine whether you are having a heart attack. 
It doesn't do that. But it is important to note, if you're not feeling great, you check your heart rate and it's super high, you need to contact your local healthcare provider immediately. Another tool that the Apple Watch does give you is an EKG reading. Now, is this a professional EKG reading? No, it's not. But it is information that your healthcare professional can use to determine if there has been a change over time. So instead of the heart with the circle, inside the circle, it's going to be a white um, circle with a red line in the middle of it that looks like, well, like an EKG. So you start that up, when what you have to do is you have to put your handy dandy finger on the crown of the watch and you have to be super still. I'm actually doing it now. Uh, they want you to do it for hold it for 30 seconds. Okay, uh, it's because I was holding my hand up. So if you're gonna do the EKG reading, it's uh, you wanna be as still as you possibly can. This data all gets stored on an app on your phone called Health. It's a white square with a red heart in the middle of it. And I'm gonna pull mine up right now. So on my phone, it happens to be a little white heart, excuse me, a white box with a red heart in the middle of it. If you're not sure where that lives on your phone, you can simply pull down from the top and type the word health. and it brings you up your summary. Now again, this summary works best if you already have an Apple phone. As you mean. My apologies, everybody. I think Mike just quit out but he might come back in like two seconds so let's give him a couple seconds if you have any questions you can stick it in the chat from mike he comes back i'm assuming he just hit exit or something like that Depending on if his computer died, it may take a couple minutes to load back up. I have absolutely been in the same situation. <laughs> Thank you all so much for your patience. If you guys are interested in any of our other programming, you guys can go to sclsmj.org. And we have some really great virtual programming coming up, as well as in-person programming.
I'll give my little SELS and J spiel until Mike pops back in. If you guys are ever interested in programming or you have programming that you want to see in the libraries, we do have a suggested program form um, on our website. So you can always put it there. Um, my, my name is Ali Zip and I'm the manager of the outreach and programming. And I take a look at the suggested program form every week. So we always I'm want to sorry, hear- I'm back. That's okay, we figured. I'm I, sorry. Took, I took advantage of, uh, of the quiet and I just started talking about SCLS. So no worries, Mike, we get it. Yeah, that's 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 not how I, who I am, I'm sorry. It's all good, don't worry. It's happened many, many times to all virtual programs before, do not worry. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. So, um, health app on your phone. This is where all the data lives. So you can see your most recent heart rate, your sleep, your, um, your steps for the day. And the one I like the most is trends. Now, unfortunately for me, all of my trends are down because, well, I got a little bit of a hip injury, so all of my all of my trends are down. But this is the place where all of your fitness stuff, all your data lives. So if you have again, in my case, this EKG thing, you can actually share this with your healthcare provider. You're not feeling well. You do all your own EKG work, and then they do an EKG while you're in the office with them. You can give them more data than you would have been able to give them previously. So that's really, really helpful and powerful fitness data that you wouldn't otherwise be able to give your healthcare provider. So this is on the bottom of page three, how to do your EKG work. And all this gets stored in the health app. Now, I'm hopeful that you will never get this warning message. If your heart rate is under 50 beats a minute, it is going to give you an alert to ensure that something isn't amiss. I'm hopeful this never happens to you, but it will warn you. Okay, uh, it's under the share button. If you go in there and you go into your thing, there's going to be a, a there should be an item in the upper right-hand corner uh, when I go into EKG. If I go into each one of them, so I go into one of them. Uh, I'm going to go into this one. Always in the upper right-hand corner, you have the ability to do an up arrow. There should be an, an arrow pointing up, like a square with an arrow pointing up. That allows you to text it or email it to your healthcare provider. So I find that to be super helpful. Um, that's a good question, though. How do I, how do I give it to them? So you do have to give it to them one at a time. You can't send all of them all at once, but that is helpful. So um, getting back to the heart rate monitor, I wear my heart, I wear my watch at night and it will track your sleep and your heart rate here as well. So if your heart rate falls under 50 beats a minute, you will receive an alert in the health app 
that something might be wrong. Unless you're in really, really good shape. For those people who have later versions, a six, seven, eight, or nine, you can also measure your blood oxygen level, which is another app and another piece of very important information if you're concerned about your long-term health. If you go to the hospital, they put one of those... Uh, meters on your finger. Using the blood oxygen app, if you have a six, seven, eight, or nine, you will be able to determine your blood oxygen level and you want it to be 97 or higher. So these instructions explain how to do the blood oxygen oxygen level items. All right, on to page five. This is super important. So please play along with me on here. On the watch itself, what you're going to do is you're going to go into the settings, which is the gears. And if you scroll on the crown, you can get through all of the settings. And I'm asking you to find the item called SOS. You have probably seen this in the Apple Watch commercials. And this is how you set it up. So I'm, I'm going to uh, reference that old commercial, I Fall and I Can't Get Up. I don't know if you guys remember that one. And that person had to purchase a, a life alert. I think that's what it was called. It was called life alert. This works in the same way as the life alert. So you tap on the SOS and there's a little item there called fall detection. Now I have mine set for during workouts only, meaning when I go for a run and I, well, hit the dirt, hit the dirt when I've tripped over something on, on the trail, my watch or my phone, depending upon whether my watch has a cellular plan, will then call for help. However, if you're someone who lives alone, and is concerned about how am I going to get help if I were to fall, this feature, you change it to always on, which is if I slide here to the right a little bit, again, I'm on the middle of page five. What I'm recommending you do is you switch it to always on. That way you don't need a separate life alert band. It will call someone. Also, you can make it do a call for you. And the way you do that is you press and hold the side button. Now you have to hold it for a few seconds. So it won't just randomly do it accidentally. But sometimes 
you're not carrying your phone with you, but your watch is on your wrist. So that allows you to get help when you need it. I find that to be very, very helpful. So I'm going to go, I'm going to hit the back arrow a couple of times in the upper left corner. You see mine says fall detection and there's an arrow pointing to the left right here. I want you to go back a couple so we go back into the settings. Because the next one I want you to look at is the one called noise. It's um, yellow. It's not too far away from SOS. You have to scroll a little bit further down to get to the one for noise. So the default is environmental sound measurements are on, meaning there's a little microphone on the watch. That's the thing that allows you to take calls and do text messages by speaking to the watch. However, I find it's useful or helpful to me to make sure that the noise notifications are set for on and the number of decibels is set up. So sometimes, I find myself in a very loud environment and I don't really recognize it. So this helps me ensure that I'm not going to negatively impact my hearing over a long period of time. Now, I will admit to you I will admit to you that um, I find it important to be aware of your environment. For example, my son and I went to a Metallica concert. It's going to be noisy. I knew that ahead of time, so I brought earplugs. So, yes, my device was yelling at me that I was in a very noisy environment. But I knew that going in. So I had brought the earbuds, uh, the, excuse me, the ear plugs, and I turned the noise notification piece off. So I find it useful to, uh, to have that in place. Okay, the next item I wanna to talk to is what's called focus. So we're back to the piece where you swipe up from the bottom. And this is what's called focus, meaning if you turn this on, you will not receive alerts or notifications or other things that would, in fact, disturb you. So for a person like me, who's wearing my Apple Watch all the time, I have my phone and my watch in synchronization. 
meaning if I get a text on the phone, I also get a text on the watch. But I don't want my wrist buzzing in the middle of the night. So I have it set for do not disturb right before I go to sleep. So as you can see, I flick up from the bottom, I select the crescent moon, and I set it for do not disturb, and I just turn it on. Like so. Or you can set it for one hour, or you can set it until this evening. This evening is typically uh, 6 p.m. The rationale for that is if you're a person who's at work, you can make it, excuse me, uh, so you don't get bothered while you're at the job. So I find that this feature, the do not disturb, can be quite useful while you are not, well, not wanting to be disturbed. So I want to make sure that I speak definitively about the do not disturb. You have the ability to customize it. So, for example, if your heart rate goes below 50 beats a minute, which is bad, the do not disturb doesn't impact that kind of alert. A medical emergency alert will not be turned off. It is more for calendar events, texts, phone calls, um, software updates, anything that's not considered to be um, uh, in, like life-threatening, a medical emergency. So the, um, the sound thing, the heart rate monitor, all those things are not going to be turned off by the do not disturb. Additionally, on the phone, you have the ability to further customize the do not disturb, meaning if you want to allow particular people to get around, thank you for that, the alarm is not, the alarm is also not turned off on do not disturb, thank you for that. Um, so, for example, if my wife were to text me or call me, even with do not disturb turned on, her items still get through. That is something you'd have to customize on the phone. They're called favorites. So you can say this person isn't impacted by the do not disturb. Because if my wife needs me or my son or my daughter, like they still get through. It's everyone else in the world who's not as important as they um, are in fact blocked. So thank you for that uh, specification. All right. So the next thing I want to talk to is customizing the watch face. This is the thing that we typically spend the most time on because, well, it's frankly the most fun but it's also a bit of the most time consuming. So what you're going to do is you are going to fire up your handy dandy phone. And what you're going to do is you are going to find the app called Watch. It's going to be a black background with a white, well, watch on it. And you should see a thing called My Faces at the top.
So whatever your watch is showing should be one of the faces. And what you do is in the upper right hand corner, there is a word that says edit. And this will bring up whatever watch faces you have in place. So for example, I have one that says Meridian. So those are all of the faces that I currently have in place. The middle button on the bottom, it'll actually say, um, watch, uh, excuse me, face gallery. Again, this is on the phone. It will say face gallery. This is the feature that allows you to send the face to your phone. You say, oh, that's the one I want. For example, I'm choosing uh, analog activity. Once you have found the one you like, you have the ability to adjust the color. There's all kinds of adjustments you can make to the color and the scheme and all that. And then what you do is you'd hit the button that says add underneath the word that says the name of the device. And now, after a synchronization, I have, it keeps on shutting off, I have the new face. So you have the ability to use multiple watch faces. And you can slide from face to face. You press and hold on the screen, and you slide horizontally, and it jumps to the various faces that you've designated to be what you want to have on your watch face. So the point is, unlike your traditional watch, you have the ability to infinitely customize, but additionally, you can simply swipe from face to face to face if you're tired of that particular face for the day. So as you can see on my little handout on the bottom of page six, I pick things that are called complications. Complications are essentially additional pieces of data that you can add to your watch face. So in my case, I have the battery, the workout, today's date, and the activity. And I have them organized around the face of the screen. So in this way, you can be customizing it for the information that you want to see whenever you want to see it. So those are, that's the customization piece that most people are, well, it's kind of cool. It's kind of neat because it allows you to infinitely customize the screen and infinitely adjust the kinds of information that you want to see regularly. So I'll give you a minute to make those various updates and changes and play around a little bit.
I will tell you this as an instructor, it's always disconcerting when you're like, I'll give you time and you never really, cause you're, you're doing this via zoom. You never really know when it's like you've given people enough time to move on. So I'll take another minute or two. Okay. I'm going to press on, but on your own time, you will take probably a ton of time to adjust the screens. Okay, what I like to do is I like to go back to the watch itself. And I would like for you to go back to the gears. Again, you flick up from the bottom. And inside of the gears, I want you to go to the first setting called notifications. And what notifications mean is that you will get alerts on the watch face as well as on your phone. Usually they're synchronized with each other. So this is the spot where you can determine what it is that you want to see on your watch. Particularly helpful, again, if you're in the middle of a workout or you don't have your phone readily available. Maybe it's in your purse. Maybe it's in your pocket. Maybe it's, you know, somewhere it's, nowhere it's not readily available. So I'll get a text from someone. I'll just quickly look at the watch and go, oh, I'll get that one later. And I can just ignore it. Or... If it's someone who's important, then I can tap on the screen of the watch and it will show me the text of the notification. So there are a couple of settings in here that I think are important for you to, to know. And the first one is notifications indicator. If that is slid to green, that means that every time you have a notification, you will get a little red dot. So if you look on my handout on the top of page six, excuse me, bottom of page six, like on there's a there's a close-up of my wrist, there's a little red dot there. That red dot no lets me know that I have a notification. So on the watch itself, I have notification indicator slid to green. So that's an important one for you to know you have notification. A little bit further down, it says show summary when locked. What that means is you'll get the first couple of words. Uh, it'll tell you from whom is the text or that you happen to have a calendar event. It's not going to it's not going to show you what the calendar event is but it will tell you that there is an event that you have to look at. A little bit further down I have the option to tap to show full notification, meaning when you tap it, it will then show you the entire thing. The reason why I have this set up is no one needs to know what the text is actually about by looking at my wrist. So I have this set up in such a way that it will inform you what is important. Now, there are a couple of more features. Again, we, we could be here for, you know, six hours because there's all these little features. But one of the ones I want to speak to um, before we leave is how to change the display brightness as also how to change the text size. One of the things I'm always hearing is that it's too small. I can't read the text on the screen. 
So what you need to go is go into settings and go into display and brightness. And what that will allow you to do is change the size of the text and how bright that text is. In this way, you'll be able to use your see the items on your watch as effectively as possible. So again, those are some of the highlights. We could we could be here forever to go over every little nuance. And there's dozens of more features that I could show, but I thought those were the key ones.